We are now moving through that Easter season, getting close to Pentecost in just a couple weeks. But being that we are still in Easter, we are focusing once again, as we have each week in this season, with the idea of how we bless our neighbors, what we do, what we can do in order to share God's blessings with other people. Today, we get a really excellent story from Acts of the Apostles that shine some light on the way in which we can bless others in the world. Now we've heard a number of readings from Acts, this story that goes for many, many chapters about the people in Jerusalem, the followers of Jesus who are beginning to tell the story of Jesus more and more to more people outside of their sphere. And today we get a really powerful story about Peter faithfully going and telling the story of Jesus to a pretty surprising person. Now here in this today's story, we need to know the context that came before this, which is Cornelius, a Roman officer, who was praying, a faithful man, heard God's voice and heard God's voice say, go find this man, Simon Peter. And so he sent for Peter. Peter came to his house, which was probably a little unexpected, and began to tell Cornelius and his entire household the story of Jesus. Now that might not seem terribly remarkable, but remember at this point in time, the Jewish followers of Jesus, his disciples, are wrestling with the idea of what it means to follow Jesus. Jesus being the fulfillment of the Jewish prophecies, the Messiah. It kind of makes sense that one would need to be Jewish to understand or for Jesus to be important. And so at this point, they're still trying to be faithful. And since Peter felt the call to go and tell the story to this Roman person, he did so. And as he was telling the story of Jesus, the spirit fell on Cornelius and his entire household. This had to have been shocking to Peter and the others who were with him. Because here was this Roman who had no concept of what it meant to be Jewish or whatever the prophecies were that pointed to Jesus as the Messiah. And yet the spirit fell on them. And why? Because they heard the story, the story of Jesus. Now the story of Jesus is powerful. Stories themselves can be very powerful. Now we know the power of stories to communicate ideas, to share feelings, And in church, there is no exception to the power of that kind of story. I can remember as a child, before I'd ever studied scripture or done anything formal, we would sit in our Catholic church with beautiful stained glass windows that represented a bunch of different stories from the Bible. And my mother would sit in the pew and point at the windows and tell me the stories that the windows represented from scripture. Before I knew anything formal, I knew the story. It's the same thing that we do with our youngest children here at St. Michael. We gather them together and we tell them stories. Now, they may not be able to do sort of high-level exegesis, as if most of us can, but they understand the story and the way that the story is crafted. And by doing that, they get this sense of God's presence, not only with them, but God's presence throughout all time. And they're part of that story. That kind of story is what we're also called to tell. You and I, we are storytellers. It's human to be a storyteller. It's natural for us to tell stories. Just think of when you meet someone for the first time. You naturally start to tell some stories. Or if you have a unique experience, maybe it's crazy, maybe it's funny, it's very quick for you to go and tell someone the story of what happened to you. That's the way that we connect. It's the way that we build community. And that kind of storytelling is not unique to St. Michael. But our St. Michael story is one that is unique. We are inheritors of the story that we build here in this church. Just think about all the ways that we go out and impact the world. There are the big ways, those obvious ways, like we might go do outreach ministries or we might volunteer in many different ways or we might dress up and help lead worship service or greet people at the door on a Sunday and on and on. And then there are the small ways, the small ways that we help spread our story one-on-one visits to people who are homebound, perhaps even taking them communion. 
those calls and those check-ins that we make with one another. Perhaps you looking after a pew friend that you might not have seen for a little while, or maybe even a neighbor who has seemed disconnected from the church for a time. When we check in with one another and we build community, that community creates part of the story that we are able to pass on one after another. Now that kind of community, based on the story that we tell, is something that we yearn for. That kind of connection, that deep connection, is something that the world does not ever give us in a fulfilling way. It's that kind of community, that kind of connection that we anchor ourselves in here at this church. That kind of community is what we need and that kind of community is what people out in the world are seeking. The love and the friendship that Jesus speaks of in today's gospel, abiding in love, is not just a feeling, but it's an action. That kind of love is active and we are called to not only be part of acting out that love, but to make sure we tell people the story of that love. What we do here in this community, in this church, is the kind of powerful message that can change the world around us. And the telling of the story is not something that we often consider when we go out these doors and into the world. But telling the story of Jesus is something that can be very powerful. How many of us leave the church on Sunday morning and then go out with the intention to tell the story of Jesus to those we meet? My guess is that not many. But this week, we might be able to consider that storytelling, especially the story of Jesus, is a way that we can bless those in our lives. All of us, in some way, wish to bear out God's blessing from this place. And we often think it can only be done in a certain way. But today I want to invite you to think about the story that you would tell. If you were to meet someone that you don't know, how would you tell the story of this church? If you were to meet someone who was somehow feeling bad or down or as if they were lost, how would you tell them the story of Jesus? In Acts today, we see that Peter, in his faithfulness, goes out and tells a story, even if he may not have wanted to, or even if he may have been confused, and it's telling that story that helped to bear the life of Christ into these strangers. We inherit that same call. You and I inherit that same responsibility to tell the story this week. I invite you to consider at least one opportunity where you can share the story of Christ, who he is to you, with someone in your life. Because courageously and perhaps unexpectedly, through your faithfulness in being able to tell that story, God's spirit may fall in ways that is totally unexpected. And as we do that, we build not only our community, but the kingdom of God one story at a time. Amen.